Imagine a country that is 70% desert. Its biggest challenge is to find sources of drinking water, but also a way to feed its population without improvising the country further. This is the situation in which Israel found itself years ago. Now, this small country is light years ahead of the rest of the world. Indeed, despite many challenges, Israel has managed to establish itself as a world leader in water management. As a result, it has transformed an agriculture sector. Many developing countries have turned to Israel to benefit from its experience. But how did this dry land country do it? Stay with us, we'll tell you all about it in this new video from ATEC. Let's go! As we all know, water is considered a virtually important resource. To ensure the well-being and quality of life in the population, having several sources of drinking water is important. In addition, it is equally important to preserve the agriculture sector. Israel has suffered from water shortages for years. The situation was so severe that it's difficult to meet household needs. The shortage also led to the deterioration of drinking water resources. They had in part become brickish in quality and polluted. The agriculture sector suffered greatly. Water allocations had to be reduced considerably. This led to drastic reduction of agriculture productivity. The degradation of an already arid land followed. The country needed to find an urgent way to supply water to its population and agriculture sector. Israel therefore found two variable solutions to find sources of drinking water. First, through the reuse of wastewater. Between 65 and 70% of wastewater from urban industrial areas is now reused in agriculture. This water is of course treated before it can be reused. It is treated in biological treatment plants through the country. 130 mm3 of water per year is recovered. It is used for irrigation or treatment of soil water. Extensive water quality monitoring is done to maintain a safe reuse system for this water. About 10% of the treated water is used for environmental purposes. Only 5% of water waste is discharged into the sea. Speaking of the sea, the second method of water supply depends on it. 70% of Israel's domestic water demand is met by the desolation of the seawater. This is a process by which salt and other impurities are removed from seawater. The country is thus able to produce drinking water. In other words, the country manages to produce about 600 million cubic meters of desolated water per year. This is enough to meet the needs of its population. Simcha Blast is the creator of drip irrigation. This invention changed the world of agriculture, especially in Israel. This invention was the result of a happy accident. Simcha found a tree that was growing into the water. He had discovered that there was a small pipe leaking, and this leakage fed the tree a small quantities. This discovery led him to develop drip irrigation. In 1965, Simcha and his son had already developed the first experimental drip irrigation system, and together they established Netafim, their first drip irrigation company. This system revolutionized agriculture system in Israel. Unlike sprinkling irrigation, this system delivers the right amount of water and nutrients directly to the roots. And unlike rotary sprinkler irrigation, Netafilm's invention waters the plant at the right time. As a result, the plant gets exactly what it needs for ideal growth. It was a very economical system. But how could such a process work in dry lands of Israel? On the other hand, one process that continues to improve itself is the subscription to our channel. We share daily selections of high-tech products. For those who are eager for new topics, you'll be able to discover every week topics like this one. Don't hesitate to suggest topics that you're interested in in the comments. Back to drip irrigation. This process works on any type of soil, so even in deserts or arid soils, it can be used. It even reduces the impact of drought. Drip irrigation is 95-100% to efficient in terms of water use. Drip irrigation has many benefits for Israel, notably higher crop yields, most importantly minimal dispensive weather conditions. Agriculture land can be handled along periods without rain. In addition to all of this, no water is wasted through evaporation. Fertilizer put into water does not affect groundwater and rivers. But what really made the difference for Israel? In the first place, it's an efficient government. In 1950 and 1960, it consistently demonstrated visionary leadership. It showed a long-term commitment to agriculture and water. The government allocated 30% of the natural budget to agriculture and water, and what made the difference was 30% was allocated to education. An early investment thus made an effective institution agriculture. A robust RG business policy was put in place. 
Second, there was an organization of farmers. Some Israel farmers and organized into cooperatives. Others were private farmers represented by a farmers association. This facilitated their bargaining power. Indeed, it allowed them to become competitive and operate efficiently. They had access to finance, research, training, agriculture inputs, and markets. Finally, a relevant market-based approach. The market has a research as a guide for government and farmers. It facilitated planting, prioritization, and coordination. As a result, Israel has become a world leader in many products. These include dates, pomegranates, oranges, and tomatoes. Despite many challenges, Israel has over the years managed to transform its agriculture sector. Israel has the highest tomato production of 300 tons per head acre compared to 50 of the rest of the world. In addition, it also has the lowest harvesting grain loss in the world. The country has also established itself as a world leader in water management. In contrast to its water reuse rate, the US has a rate of less than 10%. Thus, the US Environmental Protection Agency has sought Israel's support in the Water Reuse Action Plan. Ironically enough, Israel has a surplus of water. It even manages to export some of the neighboring countries. Innovation Africa is Israel's nonprofit organization. The organization brings Israel water, solar, and agriculture technologies to villages in Africa. Based on his experience, the Israel organization uses drip irrigation to help crops in villages. Innovation Africa has helped more than 3 million people in 500 projects in 10 African countries to date. It continues to work to spread the word about one of Israel's most famous inventions. Do you think there are other countries in the world that could benefit from this drip technology used in Israel? Tell us in the comments. And that's it folks, we've reached the end of our video. If you enjoyed the topic of the day, give us a little blue thumbs up. Please feel free to share this video and let the curiosity of people like you know about it. And to make sure you don't miss our next topic, subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell. Thanks, and see you next time on ATEC.